Yo folks and welcome, in today's video we'll be covering Echo Calypse, my closed beta impression, some gameplay, and the S tier waifus available in this game. Let's go ahead and jump right into this. Go into Expedition right here. I'm going to show you how the story mode is and what you can sort of encapsulate or visualize what is going to be the mainstay of this game. So you can see it is an auto RPG. And even if I turn off auto, the only thing that's going to be occurring is I can cast what is known as these artifacts and they deal attacks. And yeah, that is the sum of it. It's not overly complicated, but what's nice is there is some animation to the game. You can make it so it looks a little bit more HD. And that character right there, Fenrir, I believe is her name. You get her absolutely for free. I believe either day one or day two. And I absolutely love that aspect that they're willing to give away these decent looking characters or at least a lovely waifus. And I am unsure how to feel about the auto casting of skills. This sort of reminds me of just an idol game, except there's an extra layer with artifacts instead. But at the same time, there doesn't seem to be like an over idol aspect where I can farm like certain currencies while the game is turned off. But what you see is what you get right now. As far as the main story gameplay goes, I will say it reminds me of Arknights in this visual style. But at the same time, when you look at the actual art itself, it is 2D live animated and they look absolutely amazing. I also like the animations in this game. By the way, this is an SR unit. Not every single unit has the animation to it. But man, the waifus, like I said, absolute S tier. And you're probably playing this game for those aspects. And this is going to be the story. There's going to be different things that you can tackle. You can actually walk around. You can claim certain things. It'll be like, hey, you have to defeat Hemeto in order to grab that little item right there. But once you complete certain aspects, you can also grab this doodad, which is going to be really good. Sometimes they just sort of appear. So there is some liveliness to the over map. Also from this menu, you can go to secret file right here and then go to 1-1 or, you know, the overworld area for or this particular map and you can tackle enemies from here as well and you'll get certain rewards and this is how you expend your stamina because a lot of times you have 100 stamina but you're not really going to be using it that quite often and what's really interesting with this gameplay mode is that you cannot see the enemies all the time so you're gonna have to be logged into the game or at least checking the map fairly frequently in order to access this area and it is kind of important because there are certain resources tied to it so them locking certain content between time gaps not really the ideal thing for me but like i said you're here for the waifus and how amazing everything is oh i guess i can fight them again but there's also like quick battles so you can see what you can get so that valiant biochip i'm assuming that's going to be some character stuff and you can see there's some battlefield healing some things that you can do right there you can also, oh, I guess we're healing her in that direction. All right. Wow, what a heal. Good job, us. Okay, <laughs> other gameplay modes, you can go into patrol right here. Cage fight is PvP. Abyssal Drive is going to be your tower mode. So you just go in here, exact same format as far as gameplay goes. You're kind of just hanging out. You're not doing much. And at the end of the day, these artifacts is what's going to be ruling everything. Now, one thing to know is I think the artifacts will be in the summon system. I haven't done any summons yet. And we'll talk about the monetization, whether it's fair or not. During the closed beta, they're giving out gems like crazy. If they can do the same thing on release, that would be really cool. And I'll talk about the dates on how to play this game, how long it's going to be available and everything. There we go, we beat it and we can go longer into the tower. But let's jump back one more time and talk about the artifacts right here. So these are gonna be your mainstays of upgrades, I would say. And if you actually remove them, you will lose quite a bit of damage, which is kind of insane in my opinion because the heroes themselves or the waifus that you can collect, they're not that great as far as giving you like an overall boost in power, which I found kind of interesting. Here's going to be the main character. This is you. You can also select a female in case you want to, and you can do standard level ups. You can break through in order to upgrade certain skills, and then you can augment. I guess this is like a tier system in some ways. So right there, we go into tier one with our main character. We get some extra stats, which is cool. 
And you can also look at other characters, you know, they have certain tiers to themselves as well. And there's also these links where you have certain characters tied to one another and you will get bonuses. That aspect reminds me of Illusion Connect in some ways. Overall, the UI itself also hinders to Illusion Connect to me like fairly greatly. And then here's going to be the complex. This is like your idol systems. This is actually kind of cool. So if you use like this uh, thing that you get from the story, poor description, you get overall stat bonuses for everyone. There's like memory bonds as well. I'm assuming this is like some sort of dupe system and ways to interact with characters. Here's going to be the showroom where you can look at illustrations. For example, I unlocked Fenru and right here we got some extra stats with her, which is really cool. And what's a little bit iffy in some ways, I want to be honest with my thoughts on this game. When there is an overall power boost to the entire account, that is not a sign of a gotcha game that's going to be free to play friendly in my opinion. So be wary of that. Here's going to be like another achievement section. It's I guess the honor or hall of fame system. And then memories is where you can relive everything, right? Back to the monetization talks. I go into purchase center right now. The closed beta, there isn't anything I can do to spend money on, which is good. And then drop procurement is actually going to be pretty cool right here. I'm assuming this is some sort of pity system and you can get this currency, of course, from the regression area or the little amber event, the overworld map that we showed earlier. So that place is really important. And let's go ahead and do the draws right here. See if we can get something cool. 20,000 gems. OK, I guess this is the breakdown. So 648, I guess you won or I don't think that's yen. That is, I guess, a lot of money. Maybe this is like 50 bucks or something like that or 100. I hope I'm getting my math right. So that's the monetization there. Seems all right. But at the end of the day, I would be wary. I wouldn't put too much money into this game. And let's go ahead and do our summons. 1600 Aromaphrodite. I don't know if I said that right. So I haven't seen the summon animation. Oh, man, kind of nice. I ain't going lie to you. And can we get a gold? Man, that waifu right there. Oh. I'm telling you, S tier waifus in this game. If you get anything out of this, that is what you are here for. YouTube, please calm down on the age restriction. I'm telling you, they all have clothes. Everything is fine. No one is not wearing anything, okay? Everyone is very sensible with what they're wearing, very functional. And I'm not sure if there's oh, any husbandos. Wow, that is a mommy right there, or a pretty amazing Onesan. And you have your, you know, standard cute waifus as well. So there is a decent balance. And one thing I have to say about the waifus that you can collect on this game, they are balanced, right? And they don't have that mishmash of art styles like the way Illusion Connect has. I would almost say it's an optimized version, but it plays completely different. And I think this is going to be our SSR or at least, you know, the best version. There we go. We got beam. You're looking. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> There's so many things in this game where I'm just like, all right, I got to take a step back because I just did not see that coming. We're just going to keep going. I'm just going to keep summoning because summoning feels good. They gave me the currency. I feel the power and we got an SSR on, I believe, like our third or second multi. So, ooh, catch looking very nice for an SR character. Got a cute little R unit right there. And I'm guessing you only get the animations for the characters that you don't have yet. So it's just going to get faster and faster. And I'm assuming it takes 50 multis in order to trigger the pity system. Ooh, Senko, you looking very nice. Okay. I like that one quite a bit. All right, so yeah, so the draw weight. If the draw does not yield an SSR, draw maxes out, then the next draw is guaranteed. Okay, wait, let's do a single draw and see if this triggers, because I'm kind of curious if it triggers on only multis or only singles. So right here, we get Periot. Very nice, looking very classy as a maid waifu. That might be a bug, because I'm not gonna do 10x draws when this thing is not giving me 10 draws for the weighted draw. So just for future reference, maybe fix that in the closed beta, because that's a huge mistake to avoid if they so inherently keep it. Oh wait, no, now it's 31. Am I high? All right, I guess we haven't done that many summons. I guess we might have just done two multis. All right, I was tripping. My bad. All right, what can we get here? Can we get an SSR? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Oh, man. So there's like four different factions. We get Nebu, 
or she looks like she's based off of Anubis. You got pointy things going on there. I won't accentuate what that is. And oh, okay, so we did trigger the pity system all those times we got the SSR. So a 50 pity system is actually really amazing. I'm sure you guys are gonna go crazy in the comments being like, Borg, that was a pity system. What are you doing? East Rise, Empire, Nebu, and the last one. We got another Nebu character. Oh, that wasn't their name. It's talking about the alliance. All right, so this one's named Regina. Very classy. I like that name. And I think it res it only it resets our draw weight every single time we get any form of an SSR, which I think is okay. I just love a 50 guaranteed pity. I don't think a lot of games have that. So in that regard, it is pretty stellar. Oh man, Snezhada. I've been waiting for you. I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right, but she is the waifu, the one that came home, and I'm super happy about that. Let's go ahead and do our last multi right here. And who can we get? Can we get gold? Nope, we get an SR. We got some characters that we already have. Let's go ahead and jump back and look at our squad. Who do we all have? Look at everyone. Oh, her name was Nepethys. That is a pretty cool name. Gura? All alive? What? Let's change the deployment over here. And I guess this is how you can change the party structure. It doesn't really matter because at the same time, it doesn't do anything. Aside of the fact that you want to optimize the team members that you have, because if you go into this area, the information, and you can verify the links, as you can see here, there's Hana getting all of the buffs because her teammates are with her. And I'm just going to go ahead and level her up to max. Just so you guys can see what that is all about. Your level limit is based off of your account level. I'm level 15. And very interesting how my overall account level is now 13,450 or 13,450. This is just based off of all the units I collected. You can change your portraits and stuff. Pretty amazing there. Let's go ahead and end things off with some PvP. Go into patrol right here, go into a cage fight, and see if we can get us a proper fight where we won't get absolutely decimated. I think everyone is just absolutely busted right now. Except this one. We can we can bully them. I'm sorry for bullying you, but you know, people want to see me do something properly, I think. I don't think the score 4,050 or 13,000 means anything. That is sort of deceiving because that could be based off of how many characters that they have collected. And also, you did not see any artifacts appear during the summon session. So there's no gear system irrelevancy to the 50 pity, if you know what I mean. So the gear won't obstruct the fact that you can get a lot of different waifus, which I think is really amazing. If they can keep up the gems, you know, the giveaways and everything, there's some sort of code system like Illusion Connect had. You can also choose your rewards, which is kind of iffy because then you get FOMO. Like for example, I could have gotten the premium currency Aroma for Dite. But yeah, overall this game, the highlight has to be the fact that I get so many amazing waifus. Also check out this skin, bruh, you get that for free. I don't know if YouTube liked that, but man, don't age restrict because this is just a wonderful game. Yeah, in case you can see all of the different waifus. So you get it all here, okay? And that art style might be a little bit different, but everything here just looks so amazing. I just wanted to look at a couple of them. I will play this alone for the waifus that you can collect for a bit because they have a smile that's just absolutely amazing. And not a lot of gotcha games nail this waifu style to the T like the way this one does. Anyways, if you made it this far in today's video, consider subscribing, dropping a like, leaving a comment, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram if you wanna see my face. Once we hit 35,000 subs, we'll do that giveaway. Thanks so much for watching. Have yourself a fantastic day and see y'all in the next one.